Hey guys, it's Eddie and today I am back with another movie review for you all. Now today's movie that I'll be reviewing is a film that I watched recently. I found it kind of fascinating and I really just wanted to like give my thoughts on it because I think it's quite an interesting film um, and it's a modern horror movie and I kind of feel the need, I don't know why, to give my thoughts and opinions on modern horror films that are quite surprising and refreshing because I think there is a certain lack of that at the moment. Um, horror films are always kind of very samey at the moment. So I watched this and I was kind of surprised by it pleasantly. So I thought I would just give you guys my opinion. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this review and watch the film if you want to. But it is The Cabin in the Woods, directed by Drew Goddard and starring Kristen Connolly, Chris Hemsworth, Anna Hutchinson, Fran Kranz, Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins. Now, this film centres around five college kids who are on their way to a cabin in the woods, spending, I don't know, a weekend, I think it is, um, away spending some time together, hoping to have a little bit of fun. But what they don't know is that they are part of a bigger scheme, which is being conducted by two scientists, played by Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins, um, in which they aim to unleash all of the cliches of horror movies upon these five college kids as they unsuspectingly um, uh, stay at this cabin for the weekend. Now this is all part of a grander narrative that I won't spoil for you. I think you have to watch the film to see it because I feel like if I told you the real purpose of this experiment that they're sort of doing then there would be no point for you watching it because the whole film sort of unravels around this kind of big secret that's that's being hidden um, and that is you know the whole purpose that the scientists are conducting this sort of torturous experiment on these five kids so um, I won't give that away you can watch that for yourself but basically that's the sort of setup for this film now what I do like about this film is that it's a perfect blend of comedy and horror I'm always a fan of when people place comedy and horror together um, they are surprisingly very uh, complementary to each other those two themes and I think that this film really uses those two elements perfectly especially in the scenes with the two scientists Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins um, they have this sort of dry humor going on um, and amidst the sort of panic of this situation their sort of carelessness and their sort of almost joy in taking bets at what's going to happen to these kids and the like is really funny and it breaks up the film brilliantly um so the intersplicing of those scenes with the scientists amidst all the horror that's happening um back at the cabin is a really sort of refreshing thing i think and it's sort of takes you away from all the gore that might be happening at that current moment in the sort of centre of the story with the five college kids and it makes you chuckle and it gives you a little bit of relief which is always great and it's always I always like a film that takes you through certain lilts and this film does that brilliantly because you know there's a chuckle and there's a laugh and then there's you know bone crunching horror and I like that sort of switch I like the contrast that this film gives um, so yeah I really enjoyed that aspect of it and what I like about this film is that it takes the cliches of horror for example the five college kids going to a cabin in the woods a very evil dead style premise and it gives it a twist um, to serve its own greater agenda so this sort of mockery of horror cliches, typical horror conventions is used really well to serve this sort of greater narrative that is going on in this film um, with these kids being used um, for quite something quite sinister and quite dark still but you know while all of that is happening we see a sort of cinematic, cinematic commentary on the sort of um, classic um, 
horror traits that we see churned out and churned out constantly nowadays. Um, you know, with the tip, even even from the typical horror um, characters that we see are all sort of featured in this light, please. Featured in this film, the jock, the sort of virginal. A uh, brainy girl that is um, sort of the heroine or unsuspecting heroine of the piece. You know, we see the sort of bimbo, sluttish character, and you know the um, nerdy stoner character. Like they're all the cliches of horror are all represented in this film for a reason, and I think it's really sort of cleverly done. You feel like you're watching something familiar when you embark on this film already because it's begins in such a classic manner but it takes you on a twist that allows you to appreciate that these cliches have all been presented to you for a reason to undo these cliches or to explain them in its own grander narrative so I think that that is really clever and I guess it's <laughs> what I like about this film is that it doesn't take itself too seriously there are lot there is lots of comedy and the fact that it is poking fun at horror cliches says to me that it's just a fun commentary on the things that we've seen churned out endlessly and endlessly in the horror genre recently and i just like the fact that it's not it's not a sort of film that's too tied up in itself it just feels to me like it's commenting on the genre, it's just, it just feels very, very refreshing and it doesn't feel like we should take this film as a serious sort of horror film. I feel like it's got a message about the horror genre and the fact that it twists the horror genre so much in its own way is really cool and the fact that it is actually co I guess commenting on cinema in its own way is really awesome it's something that I I guess I haven't seen too often especially now with these constant horror films with these jump scares and they're constantly trying to portray this themselves as like good horror films and they're just not so the fact that you know this takes ev nearly every single cliche of horror and uses it for a bigger narrative is is really great it's really intriguing now for that reason i think that this, this film is not scary it's not a scary film in my opinion i wasn't left be feeling creeped out by it i think it's much more of a thriller um so don't walk into it because it's called the cabin in the woods and think oh this is going to be like scary it's going to be like evil deadish it's not um i don't think that being scary was actually the aim i think it's more as a sort of funny humorous display of like unnecessary gore a commentary on modern horror and a game changer for horror and thriller movies because it again it's not taking itself too seriously and it's game changing because it is using every cliche you've ever thought of and using it as a twist for your expectations as an audience so i thought that you know that was very sort of individual and unique and I liked that but it's not scary you don't come away from it feeling horrified or creeped out or anything like that so maybe just maybe reserve your expectations about the sort of scare level of this film um, because it's I really found it much more humorous than scary and you know that their intention was probably that um, the film had performances you know, from the sort of college kids, um, you know, Chris and Connolly, Chris Hemsworth, Anna Hutchinson and Francis Krantz, Jesse Williams. Um, they all fit adequately, adequately in the film. Um, they served what they were doing perfectly well. I mean, we didn't really have to ask for much other than, you know, just some banter and eventual murder and screaming so I can't really comment on their performances being like they were great my personal favorite favorite was Franz Krantz as the sort of stoner guy that was actually you know really sort of clever and um realized what was going on far more quickly than the others did I really liked his acting I thought he was incredibly funny um but yeah there was nothing special about their performances there was nothing that made me, me sort of think you know wow they're good you know it was just adequately placed within the film so 
that's all I have to say on the performances. I did I did think they sort of went very well with the tone of the film, but they were nothing special. Um, one thing that I thought was particularly great was the special effects, particularly the visual effects used for the werewolf and the merman. Um, because although a lot of the the special effects in the sort of climax of the film was CGI, clearly, um, there were a lot of singular characters that used clearly visual effects, you know, makeup effects, and I thought that was really good because we don't see that that much these days. Um, and they it really took me back to the old horror days of the 80s with like The Thing and American Werewolf in London. There was this sort of nostalgia and I thought the visual effects that were used were absolutely brilliant. I thought the final sort of monster chaos, let's call it, um, scene was totally gripping. Your eyes were constantly busy looking at one thing to another but I thought that the visual effects were really good and they, they really took me back to a time of stunning visual effects which was the 1980s horror sort of era for me. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise. Now overall did this film stick with me? No. <laughs> um, but I thought it was quirky, it was refreshing with great special effects, great blend of horror and humour and gore and I thought that it was a really interesting idea and a really interesting film. I thought that, you know, considering the stuff that we are constantly given these days, you know, Annabelle and Ouija and all of those kind of samey horror films, that this film, although it wasn't scary, it was... I don't know, I just felt like I was watching something really unique and I liked that about this film. So would I give it a rating of five stars? No, I'd probably push it down to four because I don't think I was totally sort of enamoured with it. I don't think I was totally blown away by it, but I do think that it had some really special moments and I think that horror fans, if they're just looking for a laugh, should probably give this film a try, even though you won't walk away from it scared. But as I said, I don't think that's its intention. So that is my take on The Cabin in the Woods. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Uh, remember, you can always request movies for me to review by commenting below or messaging me on my Tumblr. The link is always in the description. But that is it for now. Thanks for watching this review, and I'll see you in the next. Bye.